And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Mr. Christopher Show with my special guest. You may remember her from previous shows, Ms. Crystal Crawford. Yay! Woo! Hi, Chris. How are you, Crystal? I'm awesome. How are you? I am absolutely delightful. I'm coming to you today from Castello di Castel Borgone here in Italy. And you are about to facilitate a right voice for you class, facilitators training, yes? Yes, not just a right voice for you class, but the facilitator training. You don't know how close I was to signing up. <laughs> There's still time. Yeah. So that's a whole other conversation I'd love to have with you. Well, um, I'm all here. We are here to talk today about the other class you have coming, which is the art of reinventing yourself, which again, when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, sign me up. Yes, 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 yes. So this class, um, I'm, it's, I'm so excited that you saw this and were interested because I get, having known you, that this also is very much you. I don't know about you, but throughout my life, I was always judged or criticized maybe for going through phases or changing a lot. And I look at my life and I look at all the different phases that I've gone through of like different careers and different countries that I've lived in. That's something you can probably relate to. And all of the change that's occurred, but also how much people don't like it when you change that much. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I, I change so much. I started taking my own photos because for me to get a photo shoot every single time I was different was like untenable at that moment. So I just literally started. So it's like my, my graphic designers know that as soon as I go through a big shift, they're going to get a whole new set of photos because there's just so much change constantly. And, and there was a couple of other things that you, I mean, there's so many different facets to this and so many different times in my life that I've had to face reinventing myself because of the choices I'm making the access tools that I'm using, the new spaces I'm accessing. But then there was like the pre-access days where that was all made wrong. And so it's like, where do we even, this is a huge conversation. Like, I don't think people get how much they actually need to choose to reinvent themselves, like almost in every moment. And so I want to know where you're coming from with this. And yeah. Yeah, it is huge. Well, let's look first of all at the whole thing that I know both of us can relate to of having moved a lot. Like I have lived on four, three or four different continents and several different countries and have been in so many different industries as a result, like totally reinvented my career and pursued different paths. And the gift of that always was every new place that I went and every new experience that I had no one had any reference points for who I was or ha didn't have me rubber stamped as a certain kind of person. And so yeah. each place I went and each industry I entered, I could almost like put on a whole new wardrobe or costume and go, hey, what if I didn't have to be what I grew up as or what people think I am and I could be something totally new and different? Yeah, I love that. I just recently, well, and me too. So I've lived in the States and Canada, like now in Panama, now Colombia, we're moving there. Um, and it's been very similar, especially coming to a totally other continent in that I can just explore like who I am here or what I could create myself as here. That's completely other than what I would normally choose somewhere else. So it's been it's it's a it's always an adventure because you kind of get to discover all these things you didn't even know about yourself or that you could choose that you didn't know you could choose. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And but have you ever in your life been made wrong for that? Oh my god. Yeah, like only constantly. Seriously, like constantly. And most of the people in my family are really like pick one path, stick to it, you know, build towards retirement, create that stability. Like I guess it's the perceived stability that they value that I've never valued in the same way. And so against that, I was always wrong because I was constantly changing, constantly moving, constantly choosing different things, trying different things. And so of course that's wrong in the face of, you know, the thing that most people say is more valuable. But what I think is interesting is like stability is a myth anyway. Like, so. Totally. But in that, in all those things, did you ever, were people ever, 
judging you for not finishing things. Oh my God. I know, right? I judged myself too. That's actually one of the things I came into access with of like, I can give you the list of things I haven't finished. Can you help me figure out what's wrong with me? <laughs> and the cool part is what you've probably discovered is there's actually nothing wrong with you. It is such a gift and capacity to be able to explore these different things and not need to finish them and receive the piece of paper at the end to certify that you are somehow qualified to be something that you already know how to do. That's exactly that. And in the, in the and part of the piece of that was me getting that I was actually so fast and so brilliant that I got what I needed, like almost right at the beginning and didn't actually require the exactly what you said, the piece of paper, the certification to prove it. I just was like, oh, I got what I came here for. And man, just getting access to that as information was huge because I can't tell you how many courses I've bought that I've never even looked at where I got what I needed, like right in the first five minutes. So I was able to kind of like let my, not even let myself off the hook, get how things functioned for me, which to me is like the bigger conversation of like, what's really right about you that you're not getting and how can mm. you start to use it? <laughs> mm. I think for a lot of people out there watching or listening to this too, they probably have had, they've been pursuing this <sighs> journey to try and find out who they are. Yes. or arrive, arrive at some sense of their authentic self and the, the essence of your being and who you truly be, as though that's going to be some crystallized, defined vision of you as a totally actualized being. Whereas, yes. and, and, and people assume if you switch and change and move between different things, that you're obviously not finding that and you obviously have more work to do and a further journey to take to get to that point of knowing who you are. But and I hear a lot, I mean, I do a lot of sessions and a lot of facilitation too. And I hear a lot of people say like, I don't know who I am anymore as if that's the valuable thing to know, you know, to have that laid mapped out. And what I'm noticing is like, we're, we're tr it's like a lot of us are trying to find that in order to choose. It's like, well, if I know who I am, then I have a reference for what to choose rather than I wake up today and I create me, which is like totally other, like who's talking about that except mm. us? <laughs> mm. Yeah. So this, okay, one of the things you said on social about authentic self was interesting to me. I'm probably gonna butcher it, but you said something brilliant, like, is it, can you repeat it? Like, is it the judgment that you're using to blah, 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 say to what try it is. And, try and define who you are, I think is what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Because that's just it. Like us as beings, we have the capacity to be absolutely anything if we choose it. Yeah. And that's one of the greatest gifts. And rather than trying to define who you are or come to some like rubber stamp version, the real gift of us and the real talent of us is the ability to morph and change and move through all of these different different experiences and different ways of being you know like i was talking to some people at lunch today and a couple of them there were people from the hair industry and i don't know about you but my hair has gone through some some changes over the you, years you look at my youtube channel yeah. and every single video is different hair <laughs> yeah. and isn't it fun every time to go hey i'm gonna try this and yeah. i'm gonna go and you know, be just all hair. I mean, that was my point of view of like it grows bad, it changes all the time. Like, why not? Yeah. But some people will have that point of view about hair and they'll right. see hair as insignificant, but other parts of their life, they'll be like, super. No, no, no. This is important yes. to like stay true to who you are. I was dealing with this in terms of my brand. Okay. So I, I just recently oh, no, did a joint business so certified facilitator training and uh, a bunch of business classes. And what I found in my world was this like commitment to my brand. And when I, it was funny hearing it come out of my mouth, because when I looked at it, even I was like, what is that? Do I like, what do I mean by that? <laughs> I, I don't know, but I'm only in a place like it's, you know, for dear life. And that was the thing that I was using to control rather than like just allow things to change all the time, which is really what's natural for me. I mean, totally. what would be available if we didn't have to hold 
any like definition in place. Like we had all this energy to just create. <laughs> I, I remember reading a quote when I was, I think, in high school, and it totally changed my life. And I've I've always remembered it. And now here I am, I'm going to butcher it and not remember it properly. That's oh, okay. But um, the quote went something like, approach gateways gracefully and embrace them. Mm -hmm. Because once you pass through them, there is much you will learn and much you will gladly lay aside. And that's how I've always approached life is like, what adventure can we have if we're willing to look at teetering on that edge of change and jumping into the abyss of the unknown? And instead of freaking out of, about, oh, my God, what am I going to lose, including me? Yeah. And instead go giddy up. Yes. Let's see where this leads. <laughs> So I hear a lot of this thing about adventure, I think is in my world, I know has been kind of twisted. It's like, while choosing it constantly, I'm kind of like in resistance to it. Like, mm, I, you know, and I wonder like, if you can talk a little bit more about that, like when you, cause are you, are you always comfortable? Nope. <laughs> nope. Is adventure always the funnest thing you've ever chosen in your life? No, there have been moments in my life where I've looked at what I'm choosing and I've gone, fuck, I've got no idea what things are going to look like yeah. in the next six months to the next year or two. That's anything. like, yeah, that's exactly where I'm at kind of almost all the time. Yeah. And, and, and really enjoying the gift of that, enjoying yeah. the gift of looking at things and going, wow, everything in my life could be different because I'm really willing to change everything and walk away from all of it. Everything that I've decided is valuable or important in my life. Being willing to change that and walk away from it into the space that you know you can have. Yeah. Like not cutting off the head of the Hydra for another one to pop up, but instead going, let's really step into something different. I think it's really interesting that what's exposed by what you said from my point of view in your world is that there's value for, I don't know if value is the word, but there's there's value for something greater than the things that you've made valuable on the sort like, okay, I've made all these things valuable, but in truth, the space that I can access, the greater that I can have is actually more more important to me, more you know, um, can you talk yeah, more well, about that? Well, for you and for everyone out there watching and listening, what is it that drives you on to seek something That's, greater? Yes. For me, it's an awareness that there's more. There's an awareness that there's more of me to step into, That's more to choose, and that I'm just getting started. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what constantly is the itch that I can't quite reach. And mm -hmm. like, I remember when I was a young man and in high school and university, I was quite clear about what I wanted my career to be. And I was going to be a professional opera singer. And I like had so many of my eggs in that basket. Yeah. And even that I remember in my family, they couldn't quite grasp why I was choosing that. And remember my grandmother saying to me, well, why do you have to go to university for that? You could learn to sing in the church. But I was like, no, I know that I can do this. And I chose to go to like the most expensive university in the country. It was really far away. And I was like, yep, let's do this. No matter <laughs> what, like in, in my family, everyone was like, we can't afford this. And we, how are you going to create this? And I did. Yeah. And it took me a minute before I realized, actually, the idea of this being my forever is a bit of a... What? <laughs> yeah. I, this one thing is not going to be enough for me forever. I'm going yeah. to require more than this, more change, more growth, more exploration of me and what I'm capable of. 
That's really interesting. Yeah, I, for, I, I, you know, and I, I get that we all do this from a totally different space. For me, I'm like, I've always been looking for um, that space and that, that space where life actually functions. And so I just like took myself on all kinds of adventures to discover what that is. I mean, it started with like Bible school because I, I understood that if I go to Bible school, I'm going to get more of me. I'm going to have a foundation upon which to have me a relationship with God. That was my first premise of like, oh, if I have this, then I'll obtain that. Of course, that didn't really do the thing. Then I got married and then I got married again. And then leading myself to access consciousness, my whole drive is always like, I know there's a place where life works really well. And so what, what that's doing is that's taking me on this adventure of discovering it does create true functionality and it's totally different than I thought. And so, but I, as I keep choosing, I keep getting more access to that and keep getting more access to that. And I think it's, uh, it's so interesting, you know, what, what drives us all forward, how different it is. But, you know, if I have to let go of everything to have that, okay, you know, so. But that's the beauty of it, right? The willingness to let go of things means that you can actually truly have them yeah. because if you're not willing to lose them they're not yours Great. you're theirs they own you there's one other facet of this i'd love to explore with you and it might not take long um you know i was having a conversation with a, a person in a class the other day and you know she kept saying like i want to get back to me you know i want to get back to this person i was she'd taken herself on this adventure of um, a relationship that hadn't worked out as well and she was really feeling down about you know her and and where she'd taken her life and I have such a different point of view about those choices because I've gotten so much out of my choices that seemingly took me down this like tunnel of darkness. They catalyzed choices in me that I never would have chosen without that. Um, but I could see that in her world, you know, there was no, that she, her point of view about what she'd chosen so far was that it was of no value and she wanted to return. And I kept looking at, well, you can't return. You can only create yourself now. But I wonder what you might, you know, how you look at that. To me there, I agree. There is no returning to you. I see myself now and where I am in my life as so fortunate yeah. because all of the different things that I've experienced, all of the different awarenesses that I've had, and everything I've fostered as me has come from the willingness to make choices and expand my life. And I see myself now as a summation, an ever evolving and growing summation yeah. of those awarenesses and things that I've explored and learned as a result. One thing that I love about me and my life is I've done so much. I've been so many places and I've experienced so many different things. And like I say, that's not like, that doesn't define me, but it gives me such a wealth of things to draw on to keep creating and to experience the world with. Yeah. So it's like, if you never judged what you chose, what is the wealth you've created for yourself that you haven't yes. looked at yet? Every stupid choice, quote unquote, that you made, every heartbreak that you ended up in, every like strange ass job that you're like, how the hell did I end up singing telegrams yeah. in Korea? <laughs> Just believe me, I've been there. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And, you know, we're in a time in, I don't know, a particular historical time, I guess, where, you know, this topic is really up for a lot of people, you know, change of jobs, change of life, change of world. From my point of view, it's like just more obvious now. Things have always been that unstable or, you know, that full of change so it's like what are some of the starting points for you know 
well, reinventing yourself. Well, look at look at who has really thrived over the last few years. Yeah, it's those who have been willing to dance on the quicksand right. instead of getting sucked under because they weren't willing to change. It's those who've been willing to go right. Everything I took for granted is no longer available. So let's see what we can create with the chaos to have a different possibility rather than getting upset and bemoaning the fact that things have changed. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, to me, and you know, I remember when COVID hit, just to bring that up, I mean, I, I realized in a fraction of a second that things were changing so fast that if I didn't just literally do that, like choose, 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 changed my offer, I just literally did that. I stayed really present every day and just, and so it changes over time, you know, the, the necessity for the quickness and everything changes, changes all the time. You know, it's like I'm looking out here at the ocean. It's never the same. Right. It's doing different things constantly. Um, but, yeah, presence with it and just creating with it is what actually makes it fun. Otherwise, it's torture. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I remember I, I remember maybe a year or so ago. Um, I'd moved into a new house and uh, and it's it, it sort of matched all of the things that I'd said I'd wanted in a house. Yeah. And I was talking to Gary Douglas about it, the founder of Access Consciousness. And he said, well, now you've got your forever house and your forever relationship and your forever car and your forever job. <laughs> Gary. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that is so uncomfortable. Like, we judge ourselves for being too flippant and going through phases and wanting to change, but the idea of forever for us is torture. It's awful. Like if I'm not changing and growing and doing something different and learning more all the time, I start to destroy my life. Yeah, me too. I just like, just kill me. <laughs> Cause yeah. if you don't, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Cause the boredom, the boredom is insufferable. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm so thrilled that you're doing this. I thank you for choosing it and putting it out there. And you know, Mr. Christopher Hughes.com for people to sign up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm while we talk, if you stall, I'll find the I'll link. Stall. Yeah. You stall and I'll find the registration link to put in the chat. Well, so like what I'm really excited about just in general is, is that ability or that conversation to access the space that goes beyond whatever you've decided you have to hold in place in order to have you. Um, you know, that authentic self is such a trap. And I see so many people using that. Oh, it's, it doesn't align with me or I, it's not authentic to me. I mean, the amount of judgment we have to use on ourselves to, to obtain that, whatever we've decided that is, is huge. And to me, there's so much more freedom when you can access the space of no judgment, just like, well, does it work or not? Would it be fun or not? Yeah. Yes or no? You know? Yeah. yeah. Is this what I feel like choosing right now? Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Okay, good. Yay. Do I want to dress like a skateboarder kid today or do I want to wear a tuxedo or do I want to or whatever. whatever else? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thrilled. Me too. And I'm thrilled that you saw the value of it and you reached out to co-create this with us. And thank you for stalling because I found the registration link. It's www.mrchristopherhughes.com slash reinvent. And we have a whole slew of different languages for those of you out there who would like to join us in your native tongue. You can use your tongue while speaking it. Look, <laughs> I've got oral skills, let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm excited. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, Crystal. Have an awesome, awesome day. You too. Bye, everybody. <laughs>